Hey guys and gals, I forgot to mention something in the video, so I'm going to put it at the beginning. When I first started in YouTube, Bloodstalker101 really helped me out. If it wasn't for him, I probably wouldn't be you doing YouTube videos right now. Bloodstalker is sitting at 922 subscribers. He needs 88 more plus one, so 89 people total, to sub to his channel so he doesn't get demonetized on the 20th of February. Now, he, he plays a lot of the same games I do, but he doesn't do ARPGs. But if you can go to his channel, check it out. If you like his presentation, if you like his humor, give him a try. I'm not saying sub, I'm saying considering subbing to the guy. Help him out, because he really helped me out. All right, let's go ahead and get into the build. Thank you very much. In a world searching for gaming knowledge comes the man, the myth, a legend in his own mind, Critical. Welcome back, guys and gals. Critical here. Today I'm bringing an episode of Wilson, and I'm doing something different today. I have never made, quote-unquote, a build guide. Because I don't feel, one, you should really do it too often in like an alpha game because things change too often. And two, I don't think I really know enough about the game to tell you this is how you do it. I'm not going to break out in a song. I thought about it, but I won't do it. So Mark Gray, one of my new subscribers, I believe he subscribed, um, commented that I was, uh, that if I put stats into my and in my willpower that I'll have a better chance of applying poisons and rent, which is, I was running a bleeding and poison build and I didn't put any willpower in. So then my chance of actually poisoning something if I wasn't using one of the files was zero because I have a negative. I didn't know this. I wish I had seen it. So that whole poison idea you can do it. I'm not saying you couldn't run a poison build, but the damage ticks so slowly and the amount of, of return and the investment you have to make into willpower to make it worth it. And I tried doing like the uh, magical thief and then do the uh, pestilence and I'm doing a, a poison and I the damage just wasn't there. So I was like, you know what? I I think that I'll try different builds. And I tried several different builds. I tried to do a thorn build as a dual wheeling dagger. Of course, that doesn't work because I don't have thorns. It, now, if I dodge, I can. there's ability I can take. So anytime that I dodge, I can cause thorns damage, which actually does work. But it, it's, it's too much of an investment to get to it. So then I tried doing um, a poison and or a critical one a rend build and but rend is a stout a, a status ailment meaning i have to have willpower so then i just i decided i'm gonna go full critical i mean come on let's be honest my youtube name double out critical and i don't know do any of you guys know what a double out critical is let me know in the comments if you know what i'm talking about but I was like, you know, my name's critical. Let's build a, let's make a critical build. And somebody, and I forget who it was, mentioned um, about a critical build. So this is what I did. I'm gonna go in the offsets area. So I went into the Guardian and I did this just to get some toughness and uh, give me the ability to defend myself. So it gives me some toughness, the defense, um, rage regeneration, more defense, more defense when my uh, stuff's below, even more defense and some toughness. And then I can block incoming attacks, even ma magical ones. Now I'm not using a shield, but there is a skill that I believe I took in this build that I did take in this build that I should be able to block incoming attacks with melee weapons. We'll see that in just a second. And then I went into the thief and I took runner, thief, uh, swift blades, um, uh, exerting strikes and then quickness I, I didn't want to now the rest of this is all dash stuff and dash can be useful but it's not 
it, it wasn't what I was wanting to focus on. I want to focus on doing the most amount of damage and preferably burst damage to any any mob that I run into. And then I took something I haven't done, especially not a dual dagger build. I went into legionary, all right? And the, the active skill is battle art or defensive. So if I need to be defensive, my I, I get slowed down, but I have plus 25%. Uh, 25% defensive. If I am on battle, which is where I am right now, as I normally go, I move faster. I mean, I attack faster, but I have less defense. So it's a trade-off. And then I went straight up the middle, and I took, you know, uh, the fighter for rage, well, rage conservation, rage generation, ferocity all the time. But the thing is, is my damage isn't based on ferocity. I was going up here for skills. These skills help better than going here where I'm getting more agility. Because I'm putting my agility by my points. So weaponizer, 3% physical damage is actually pretty nice. 75% rage generation when your rage is empty, which is, is actually very good. Um, physical damage, attack speed, and agility. So I, I do get some in, in soldier. And then 8% to all weapons damage done with daggers. I'm using dual daggers. That's 8% in, in, on each dagger. 5% to all damage done with one-handed weapons. Stackable when dual wheeling. That's another 10% overall to all my damage. And then I go into gladiator. Now here is a little bit harder because everything has nothing to do with daggers. I think this one does just dual wield. So I get brutality for some damage, uh, stamina regeneration, attack speed with dual wield, which is great for me, and agility. Um, overkill. Now this is a cool one. Unyielding. You can now block attacks with any kind of melee weapons, not necessarily shields. So with my dagger, I can block attacks with my daggers, which when you go back here, I can, you can block all incoming attacks, even magical ones. So I'm able to block attacks while dual wielding daggers, which I thought was pretty cool. And it should help me survive a little bit longer. Um, I went for some more ferocity, which really isn't, it's not for me, but I, I really wanted the 10 damage done with all, 10% uh, damage to all melee weapon damage. And then I went up on this one too, agility, and then attack speed and negative attack speed for ranged weapons. Th this tree was awesome for what I'm doing. 50% um, to your chance to perform overkills. And then 35% to duration of various bonuses you gain when performing an overkill, which is also a nice one. And then I went into the assassin tree. This is where my bread and butter is. Now, I'm not touching anything over here. I went just to Punisher. All this is status. You ha you To do it right, you have to invest a, about 30 to 40 points into Will. And I don't want to do that. So I went up and got my Punisher, and the one said, give me the death sentence. Now, there are some good Punisher stuff over here, but I, I, I'm not going to go into that area. I'm staying over here. So um, Nocturnal, which, low, uh, which helps me not get attacked. It gives me some benefits and buffs. Light step, uh, lightweight gear, which I haven't reached that pinnacle. I need to get all my gear lightweight, and then I'll be good with that. Um, this is passive, so it's just a free one. Weapon Mastery Daggers. Each critical hit done with a dagger may ignore part of your enemy's physical protection. 10% to all damage done with daggers. Wow. Okay, that's huge. Plus 15% to critical chance with weapons, with daggers, crossbows, swords, axes, stackable in both hands. That's 15% in the left, 15% in right, 30% overall. Huge. Okay. Um, plus six protection piercing. Okay, so it's nice um, that I get some defense in the street too. Another passive one right now. And then plus three to critical damage weapons and shields against full health enemies. Uh, plus one agility. So that's the basic tree that I took. And I'll scroll out so you can get a better look at it in all its glory. I'm not sure where I'll put the other points. I And this, I'm not saying this is perfect. There's a lot of mobility there's a lot of utility that I did not take that I might I might try to, you know, 
couple here, a couple there. I've got a few more points coming to me that I'll try to put in there. Now, if we look at our, my actual character sheet, I added some points to ferocity, mainly for the attack speed modifier. And this isn't to give me attack speed. This is to lower the uh, the negative, because this is like negative four or something like, you know, negative four completely. And I wanted to, my critical damage multiplier, I want to get that eventually up higher. So it's a positive, because right now I've got negative 1.1. Now, I put points in the toughness, and I actually put a lot of points in the toughness just to give me more health, some defense, just so I can survive a little bit. And then 225, I've, I put most of my points into agility because I'm all about crit, movement speed. The Now, the damage modifier for range, I think it works with my thrown knife, but that's it. And then, of course, the critical chance modifier plus 24.5%. And then I've done nothing to my willpower. Um, now, I don't have a block chance, which is odd because I have the ability to block with my weapons, but I'm not sure if, if that's working correctly yet. I haven't seen a block happen, but now when we go up here, my damage rate's nice and high. My weapons have been improved. I'll show those in just a second. But my attack speed is... Not bad. I mean, they're daggers, so they're fast anyways. You don't need a lot of attack speed on top of your daggers to make them attack quickly. But my critical uh, chance with weapons, 66.4%. So basically, every uh, 1.5 attacks, I've got a really good chance of getting a critical. Critical damage, plus 120.8. That's huge. Trust me, you're going to see it. I have uh, went to the daily dungeon, and I, I kept doing the daily dungeon because right the very first mob in today's daily dungeon is actually a pretty, it, it can be a difficult mob. The first few builds, I'd sit there and I'd beat on him, or I, I'd get some, um, some poison on him, and he would whittle down. Um, not anymore. I walk in, whack, whack, he's dead. Seriously, it's whack, whack, he's dead. I, I, my character actually says whack, whack, and the thing dies. That's basically what happens. You'll see what I'm talking about in just a minute. All right. And I think that's, yeah, that's about it. Okay. So this was, this was an eye-opening experience for me. Now, I did get uh, some nice large potions. And then I'm running a burning file, a shocking file, and a freezing file. Wow. The freezing one is really nice because any tough enemies, it'll freeze them and slow them down. Let's talk about my skills because those have changed when I'm, when I'm actually using of course, your dagger's combo is your left mouse button. My right mouse button, I use Brutal Strike because the weapon's damage is 259 to 309% damage. I've got this all the way up this one. The uh, radius is increased, which means I'm doing more damage to the enemies surrounding me, which happens a lot. The Brutal Strike inflicts more damage. I want to, like I said, I'm all about hitting the enemy as hard as possible and trying to kill them within the first second or two of attack. Now, I mean, I can hit Brutal Sykes may knock them down, and that can be useful, but not as useful as just killing them outright, and that happens a lot. And then Harassment. I actually haven't had a chance to play with this yet. I just got it before I started this video. This, what happens here, is if I use a Brutal Strike and I kill an enemy, I automatically cast another Brutal, brutal Strike. If I'm fighting a, a tough mob, and he's got a lot of little, you know, minions and skeletons around him. And I drew a brutal strike and I kill a skeleton and I'm trying to, you know, beat up on the main guy. I automatically do it again. If I kill another skeleton that's around him, I do it again. And again, I'll, I can cast it once and it can go off like three or four times, depending on how many enemies are around the main mob. That's really powerful and it's a ton of damage. And I should be able to burn down pretty tough enemies that way. Now, by Blade Slinger, I still want to get this. I I will, I, I want to try these. This this intrigues me that there's I can get that many skills on one ability. I love it. Now, I don't lose Laceration as much because it's a bleed. But if I'm surrounded by a lot of little mobs, it's nice to get some dot damage out there. Um, I'm still taking Infiltration. I'm not going to take that off Killer Instinct, of course. And then, then I'm using my Battle Art. All right. So that's majority of the build. Now I want to show you uh, the build in action. 
we are going to go into the daily dungeon to do this. Now, oh, I'm sorry. I almost forgot to show you my gear. Now, I have gotten a couple new pieces, but nothing, you know, nothing like, oh my God, you have to see this gear, but it's pretty nice. But what I did do is I had a knife in my storage box I completely forgot about that does 25 to 61 points of damage. It's much better than the other knife that I have, but this one attacks very fast. Now, the two gems, I've got a frost gem in this one and a lightning gem in this one, which is awesome, and a frost gem and a sacred gem. Sacred damage hits all the undead really hard. It's very, it's a very useful um, stat ability against those kind of mobs. So that's why I took it. But <laughs> you have got to see how much, I'm not going to use any files. I'm not going to hit these at all. I'm just gonna go, I'm gonna run up to this guy and just beat him over the head. And as soon as I have enough rage, I'm gonna brutal strike. Watch how quickly this thing dies. Come here. Oh, he jumped away. But there, I did a, nearly a 2,000 point uh, critical there. Nearly 2,000, I think it was over 2,000 points. There's a couple uh, hard mobs, look at that. Almost everything was a critical, and then it was all hitting really hard. Now I pop my files, just boom, boom. See, that's what I'm talking about. It's the boom, boom. Oh, I just got a name for it. This is my boom, boom build. Instead of this is my boom stick, it's my boom, boom. But that's what she does. She goes up and she just instant death to most things. Now, do you see how I had that, that double strike? That's the thing going on. Boom, boom, boom. There was three hits right there. It's because the first one died. And then when I when I when when it automatically cast again, another enemy died. So I got the additional uh, brutal strike. Or in this case, the boom, boom. I'm sorry. I like that name. I think that's pretty. I'm just, I'm glad I just came with it up on the. I you know, came up with it on the fly, and I'll have to put it in the thumbnail now that it, this is officially the boom boom. Oh, okay, right there. I think that was five or six uh, brutal strikes. That that's overkill. I can almost call this the overkill build, because that is really overkill. Now, when you're fighting single mobs or much tougher mobs, it's not going to cast as often. But most times when you have a, a bigger mob, he usually has little minions around. And so you're going to get those additional strikes. See, this guy, I'm not going to have that on. But, you know, it, you know, still, I took him out with uh, a single brutal strike. Ah, oh, they keep knocking me down. And if I can't um, do multiple strikes on them, I'll just stab him with my daggers over and over again until he's dead. It, it takes a few seconds. This is probably the most powerful build I've ever made in Wilson. And uh, I'm loving it. Hopefully I don't get sued by McDonald's, but I'm loving it. This, this one's fun. You know, before I was like, oh man, look how much damage I'm doing, you know, and stuff was dying left and right. This, that, that just had no, has no bearing on, on reality. Look at that. Look at that. I mean, I barely had a chance to even target the mobs and they were all dead. Now, these guys are always going to be a problem because they're runners. But I can throw my knives at them. Oh, come on. And take them out too. So that works. Now, I'm going to try to refrain from using my uh, files until we get to the boss room, because I want those for there. I mean, God, look at all this stuff. Let's pop this to see. I'll take the magical items for sure, because they sell well. Better than normals, at least. Anything in here I want? Um, no, not really. I wish gems would have a different colors because I've probably left some gems behind. So it would be nice if gems would, if all gems, regardless of their quality, would just show up as blue or, oh no, not blue, as a, uh, their, uh, the lettering for them on the stuff that that's white. Um, make it green for gems, that would be nice. 
Okay, right there. He had two he had two minor mobs. I did the attack and it allowed me to to uh, to do additional brutal strikes on the the big fat mob. Now, in this room there's an enemy that will kill me almost instantly with this build. All right, I've been saying that this build is overpowered. It really is. But the more power you have, the more power they can... Oh, yeah, returns damage. He has a reflective buff on him, meaning anything you do to him, he'll, he'll attempt to re reflect it back to you. So I'm going to bring him over here, pop everything, and then I'm going to roll away. Because I rolled away fast enough... Oh, no! Oh, I stayed there too long. So that's what happens when you have a, an overkill uh, build and you reach a uh, a mob that is uh, reflective damage. You have to hit once or twice and roll away. Because if I understand correctly, you hit them and they, they kind of have like an electrical discharge and then that damage is reflected back to you. I stayed there probably one second too long and that's what got me killed. That sucks. I was doing so well. I wanted to, to make a quick run of it, but obviously that's not going to happen today, is it? Now, everything I'm, I'm putting... You see, I've got this up to 15 already. Um, actually, I'm not going to put any more points in there. It, all The only points I get in this now are just going to raise the damage and not give me any additional skills. So now it's all Boyd, uh, Boyd sl Slinger. I can't speak. Anything else? Nope. Okay, that's it. And did Boyd Singer... Oh, I got my next one. Critical chance modifier increased more charges you have when launching it. Oh. Okay. All right, so this one, I've increased my critical chance of it. And if it does crit, I can refill one immediately. That's worth having. Because if it crits all the time, I can continuously keep throwing daggers out. That's very useful, actually, especially with those running enemies where they want to constantly run away from you. Uh, yeah, that's that's probably going to be nice. I want to buy that back. Uh, no. Bandit. Eight, uh, it has agility on it. Yeah, I want, I want to swap that. Oh, a nice raw one, too. That's probably the best ruby I've ever seen. But I'm not using uh, that anymore. But it does give me agility in my defense. Hold on. I might be able to make use of that right away. So I want to keep stacking agility. Because that's my, uh, the, my uh, primary skill. 23 agility, 20 agility, but I have a critical damage. No, I'm going to sell that one. And this ring, toxic resistance on kills. Frost damage, yeah, I'm gonna switch that ring out for now. Anything worth buying? It, oh, that's all I was selling. It doesn't look like it. Nope, okay, uh, potion. Nope. I'm going to drop these back in here. I, I want to go at least hit that first mob. And so that's what I was doing. I would, I'd come out here, I'd reset all my skills. And I'd put points in there to something that I think would work. And I would just run into this. And now it doesn't, this doesn't always work this way. The first mob isn't something that you can, it's not always a, a good enemy that you can um set your barometer by but in this today's yes it is watch him pop out his face up he's gonna die ah he jumped again if he didn't jump i would probably take him out instantly but every time i i go for a, a brutal strike he jumps away from me okay but you know that's smart you don't want the mobs to be too easy to kill like that <laughs> oh man i i'm enjoying this and i've got her up to level 17 
I actually want to get, I've never had a, uh, I've never brought a character all the way up to level 20. And this is going to be the first character that I do that. And once I'm level 20, I'm going to take on the boss. I have a feeling that when I hit level 20, I'm going to face roll the boss. Uh, I hope not. I hope the boss um, levels up. I don't know. I know I can take the boss on right now. At level 17, I should be able, to, as long as the boss doesn't have uh, the ability to request damage, the final boss, then I'll be just fine. But if that final boss has the ability to reflect damage, yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be nasty. And it's probably gonna end up killing me a couple times. But I have yet to see uh, the undead lord have reflective damage before. But this is a good mob. I mean, I'm I, you know I'm like I wasn't happy that I died, but I was happy that you guys got a chance to see that. So that you understand that, you know, okay, I found a build that really helps me, you know, basically murder all enemies. And even though it seems to be overpowered, I can easily basically kill myself if I'm not careful. And that's a good lesson to learn when you're playing uh, any ARPG. But in Wilson, you know, there's no holds barred. Don't get greedy when you're fighting a mob like that. Go in, get a hit or two roll out, re reset, and do it again. And you're probably gonna have to uh, use health pots while you're waiting too. Which would also be smart. I love hearing those multiple brutal strikes going on. That's awesome. Look at this. I'm st so what I'm doing is I'm freezing my uh, frost damage is freezing them. The lightning damage is stunning them. And I have abilities that when enemies are stunned, I do more damage to them. And then I go ahead and do a brutal strike while they're stunned. So it's just, I'm stacking different damage types that all synergize with each other. And stuff just dies. I mean, that's what just happens. Oh, that's just too much fun. And this is a lot more fun than doing that, uh, the poison build, I have to admit. And don't worry, guys. I'm going to be doing more Wilson. Um, even, <laughs> there's, I, uh, I'm, I'm lost for words. There's no way that I cannot continue playing Wilson. Uh, you guys have supported the hell out of this game. Uh, your people are subscribing left and right. Yeah, still returning damage. People are subscri uh, subscribing left and right. You know, if if I don't play any more Wilson, man, they're just they're, I'm gonna have a riot on my hands. Now you saw that that lightning around him. That's the damage he's returning right there. When he starts one of his attacks, right there. That's what I got to stay away from. Roll out. I got damage. Took him about halfway. Oh no, not again. <laughs> I'm sitting here talking. The, the last time, I took him out cold. But I'm sitting here trying to talk about it instead of paying attention to what I'm doing. I'm not blaming you for getting me killed, but you're getting me killed. No, I'm just kidding. You're not getting me killed. It's all on me. I don't think I'm going to try again. I, but you saw how the build can work. Um, one thing that, that I should have done this time is I could have kited him around. I could have killed all the other mobs off first kited him around and just uh, done blade swingers. Now that I can throw that knife out and anytime it crits, I get an immediate one back. I can continuously throw them as long as I'm continuously critting. And that would have taken him out pretty easily too. Maybe next time that's what I'll, because like I said, I want to get up to level 20. The next time I do a video, it'll be me going back in there and taking that guy out. But this time using the blade swingers to do it. But I've been critical. This has been Wilson, the Bam Bam build. I, I, I do like that name. If you've liked this content, go ahead and drop me a like. Consider subscribing, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take it easy.